All right. Welcome to We Are Libertarians Daily. I am Hody Johns. I'm actually joined with a superhero within the Libertarian Party, Laura Ebke. Laura, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Hody. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. A lot better now that you're here, that's for sure. Mm, all right. Um, man, so I'm trying to pick one of the billion questions that we have for you. I think election's still on everybody's brain. And of course, you probably just want to unwind from the whole thing, but everybody else is wound up. So uh, I'm sure this hasn't gotten old yet, has it? Uh, not too much. No, I, actually, um, you know, it's been um, it's been two weeks almost now. And um, it's kind of nice to, uh, you know, I've kind of moved on. And, uh, you know, not everybody moves on as fast as, as I do to things. But I, I always believe that um, when when one door closes, another one opens. And so, um, you know, I'm I'm excited to move on to the next stage, whatever that is. Sure. Yeah, well, let's, uh, you know, let's start with the basics here. You've actually okay. won an election before, which yeah. is, uh, for most people listening to this uh, podcast, that's unheard of. Now, yeah. you did so as a Republican, but you became a Libertarian afterwards. But just winning it all, I think, is something that we in the Libertarian Party have a tough time even grasping. So <laughs> what what did it take for you? What are, what would be your tips to anybody? What did you do as far as actually winning an election? Well, first of all, um, I've, I've won four elections. I was I was elected three times to my local school board. Um, and so um, before I ran for the legislature. So, um, you know, one of the things to win is it's, it's kind of important, I think, is to um, is, is to run for the right thing and to establish some credibility. And so I was on the school board for three terms for 12 years. Um, and, um, you know, it was, uh, it gave me an area of expertise in, in schools and, and gave me a reputation um, in my hometown at least. Um, to win um, the legislature the first time, it was a really tough race. We have term limits here in Nebraska and um, we actually run on nonpartisan tickets. It's kind of one of those weird things, but um, our legislature is a nonpartisan legislature. And so um, while I was a registered Republican, um, I wasn't actually running as a Republican. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, the, the parties do get involved um, at, at some level, but um, on the ballot, it doesn't show up as an R or a D or anything else. It just it's just a nonpartisan race. And so, um, you know, the things that you have to do to win an election, um, you know, you have to knock on a lot of doors and you have to raise money and you have to be prepared to um, send out advertisements, mail ad mail pieces and things like that. And you have to be willing to take um, the slings and arrows that come along with, with, with running a serious race. You know, if, if you're, if you, it, you know that you're being taken seriously and that you're a threat to somebody um, when they start sending out the nasty mail pieces or run the nasty radio ads about you. Sure. Well, I mean, I think all, all of us can long for the day when we get the hate mail about us. That really means we've made it in the business. <laughs> well, then I guess I've made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. Um, yeah, talk about being in the spotlight as far as state senators go. Yeah. I mean, just even compared, I mean, party aside, you know, you were yeah. probably one of the most notable name recognition as far as state senator goes across the entire yeah. nation. Um, go ahead. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, I think it's um, I, I was pretty, uh, you know, Nebraska state senator, um, a typical Nebraska state senator is pretty um, nondescript in most play, you know, most of the time. And then when I made that switch um, to, to the Libertarian Party, um, you know, I, I always tell people that I became sort of a celebritarian. Um, you know, it, it was a, it was a strange, it was, it was strange for me because um, I wasn't expecting you know, when I when I made the switch, I really wasn't expecting much attention, and all of a sudden, people started calling me and inviting me to their state conventions, and um, you know, it got to be kind of a kind of a big deal. Um, you know, I felt after I was um, after I made that switch, and people started paying attention to what I was doing in Nebraska, I think I felt more of a more of a um, more pressure to actually, um, you know, do libertarian things. Um, even though I was a pretty pretty libertarian to begin with, um, you know, I was much more conscious about 
um, about what kinds of things that I would introduce, what kinds of bills I would introduce um, that w- would, um, you know, promote the cause without hopefully, you know, destroying my chances of, of getting reelected. Um, you know, so so you do things like, you know, my occupational licensing um, reform bill was a big deal, and we got it done on a tripartisan basis in the legislature, and the governor signed it, and um, we were the first state to really um, introduce anything really big that way. So um, it was a lot of fun. Um, but and, and I think very libertarian because it it, it, it points, you know, in, in a practical sort of way. You know, it's not one of those occupational licensing reform isn't one of those real sexy kinds of things. Um, you know, the big ticket items for libertarians, but it's very practical. And so we were really excited to um, to, to get that one passed. Um, but, but yeah, the, the kind of, uh, you know, I told somebody, I told somebody a little while ago, I said, I've got five, um, five state conventions that have invited me since my, since, since, since the election, <laughs> you know, I thought, I thought, okay, they're going to just drop me like nothing. And since the election, I've been invited to five state, state conventions, um, you know, in March, April, and May of next year. So. Wow. And, and, I I, I got to give you credit here because I you were like okay you know it, you know I'm gonna take a step back but is there anything I should take a look at and I was like oh maybe I can get an interview with her and then there was like 500 comments and I was like well yeah. I'll throw my hat in there and see what happens so I really yeah. appreciate you taking the time to respond to that sure because because uh, I was just I was one of many many but I really appreciate you making that one of the uh, one of sure. the many um, so let me ask you because I. I want to get back to the libertarian, what, what made you switch, what was your journey there? But before we get into that, what made you a great fit for, you talk about libertarians fitting for the right position, or, or I guess people fitting for the right position that they're running for election mm-hmm. on. What yeah. made you a right fit for a school board and then state senate? Well, um, you know, part of it is just um, is just opportunism. Um, you know, in, in my in my community, um, you know, we when we elect school board, we, we elect three members at a time, and so it's three members for four year terms, and then another three for, uh, in the next two years. And um, there were a couple of people that were getting ready to leave the school board, and you know, kind of traditionally, it's a fairly good sized school board, fairly good sized community, so it's not you know like they have trouble finding people. But, um, but, but traditionally, um, they asked, uh, you know, I had somebody ask me at church actually one day, Hey, why don't you run for school board? Cause I'm leaving, you know, I'm, I'm leaving the board. And so, um, that, that sort of got me interested in it originally. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I have, uh, my mom was on the school board in my hometown. And so it, it made a lot of sense, um, that, that that would be a place where I could serve. Um, it wasn't a huge time commitment, um, you know, one meeting a month and, you know, a couple of other small meetings during, during the year. So, um, so, so that made a little bit of sense for me to do that. Um, you know, I enjoyed my time on the school board, but after about, you know, you can serve on the school board for an unlimited amount of time. Um, but it made sense for me to um, to, to look for something else. Um, and um, Nebraska has term limits in the legislature. And um, it, my, the end of my third term of the school board was going to coincide with the end of my uh, uh, my predecessor's uh, time in the legislature. And I thought, well, you know, it might, might be a good time to try something different. Um, if I was going to ever try to, to do something um, at a higher level, um, it made, t- made sense to do it um, at that point. And so um, I ran. There was another guy that decided to run because of term limits as well. And, um, you know, it made sense. But, you know, I part of it is, you know, know what you're, know what you're getting into, um, on the, on the school board, you know, I, I'd seen what my mom had done on the school board and I'd been around people who'd been on the school board and I went to school board meetings. And so I knew what I was, you know, what I was getting myself into, um, same way with the legislature. I'd been around the legislature and watched, you know, as an advocate, um, with campaign for Liberty and things like that. So I had watched, um, you know, watched what the legislature was up to. So, um, you know, felt some level of, okay, I know what I'm going to, what I'm getting myself into and what things are done at the state level and what things aren't. So, I mean, whatever you decide to run for, um, you know, know what it is that you're running for. Sure. And, um, you know, don't, um, if you're, if you're running for the local school board, um, you know, don't talk foreign policy, you know, talk about things that matter based on your, you know, what you're, what you're running for. Right. Okay. Um, 
makes a lot of sense here. Let me uh, uh let, let's go to the next step here, and I, I guess well, first of all, we hear Nebraska, Laura Ebke, term limits and occupational licensing reform. You're gonna. I mean, you're going to become the next free state project project pretty soon here, with a <laughs> resume maybe. like that, you know. It'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, to move to the next step, uh, I have so many questions about this, but let me just break it down piece by piece. What made you a Republican to start with? How did you identify with Republicans, and what like libertarian values did you maybe have, even though you were registered as a Republican? Because I, yeah. I have a similar journey to that. Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm old. Um, I grew up in a um, in, in in a Goldwater household. I mean, the, the family lore is that my first word was Goldwater. I don't I don't really believe that's true, but you know that, that's what my that's what my 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 dad and my grandfather used to tell me all the time. And so, um, you know, my view of Republican uh, of Republican Party politics has a strong um, strain of of libertarianism um, in it. Um, you know, kind of the Goldwater to Reagan model of smaller government, lower taxes and, and that sort of thing. You know, government stay out of your life and leave you alone and that, you know, that, that sort of thing. And, and um, you know, I, that, that's really what I thought. You know, I thought I could be a Republican in that in that model, um, you know, for most of my life. And um, in, in 2008, um, I got very involved in the Ron Paul effort, um, you know, trying to reclaim that strain of republicanism, if you will, um, in 2008 and 2012. And um, by the time I ran for office in 2014, it became pretty clear to me that the party wasn't very friendly to that anymore. I mean, they had pockets of it. You had Justin Amash and you had, um, you know, Rand Paul even. Um, Ron Paul seemed like he was giving up the ghost on, <laughs> on, on, on that that strain being really active in, in the Republican Party. And um, after a couple of votes that I think were, um, you know, more libertarian and the governor called me out in 2016, along with a number of other Republicans who had voted not the way he wanted, um, it, it seemed like a good time to make the move for me. Um, and, and so um, I had gone to the Libertarian Party State Convention in 2016. They had invited me to come and speak because I was the closest thing to a libertarian in the in the in the uh, legislature. And I went and spoke to them. And I'd, I'd run into a lot of these guys with um, you know the Paul movement and and Campaign for Liberty mm -hmm. and and that sort of thing before that. And um, one of them came up to me as we were standing in line for lunch at the Libertarian Party Convention. And said, hey, Senator, you know, um, if you ever decided to make a switch, we'd be happy to have you. I, okay, well, thanks. I appreciate that. And um, and and um, about a month later, I went to the Republican Party State Convention in 2016. And, you know, I wasn't real happy. I wasn't a big Trump supporter and, and uh, um, wasn't real excited with the direction that the party seemed to be going. And and um, the, uh, the, the that was the time when the governor decided to, you know, call us all out. And uh, I um, I walked away from that pretty sure um, that I was going to have to make the switch. And by the end of the month, um, about over over Memorial Day weekend, um, while everybody else was in all the all the libertarians were in Orlando, um, I made the switch. Um, I let my um, constituents know um, the people who had donated to me um, in, in a previous election. I let them know, and I let uh, the libertarian guys that were at the convention know that I was making the switch. And they announced it on the floor of the convention <laughs> that that somebody <laughs> that, that Nebraska was now the uh, the home of the latest um, the, the 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 most recent um, libertarian um, state legislator. And um, it didn't take too long for the press back here in Nebraska got to get wind of it and I guess I must have been the most likely um, the, the most likely suspect because they started calling me um, I got a call from the Omaha World Herald you know a few days after that and it was kind of exciting so yeah well and and you were one if I'm not mistaken you were one of a handful of Republicans that switched there was actually a Democrat or two as well that switched nationally but was right, there yeah. more than one in Nebraska I thought there was a um, th there was a, a guy who switched in Nevada Oh. Um, who, who was, who was, um, uh, who, who had switched before, right before I did. And I switched and the next day he called me up and welcomed me to the, um, to the, uh, to, to the club. And then not too long after that, um, Utah, 
um, Senator Madsen um, switched um, not too long after that. Um, he didn't run for re-election, and the guy from Nevada didn't run, win re-election in 2016. So um, I was kind of, and then the guys from New Hampshire switched. Um, uh, uh, Brandon Finney and and Caleb Dyer were both Republicans, and um, uh, Stalcott, I think, was his last name. He was a Democrat. He didn't run for re-election, so um, they had three for a while. Um, they both got beat, too, so um, I don't think there's anybody out there that are libertarians that are state legislators um, after the first of the year. Sure. Yeah, no, we uh, the, the, we had a tough time with the re-incumbents, especially. Uh, yeah. I, they just released a post saying, you know, congratulations to the one who won. I think it was like 18 or something. We got a few mayors and, you know, some yeah. new level. But, uh, you know, we'll take what we can get. And really, I feel it's more of a moral war than it is a war about victory right now at all costs. I feel mm -hmm. like we got to do the right thing and we got to build this party up. And we got to build, we got to build, the, even before party, we got to build the culture and philosophy up too. Now, you mentioned Ron Paul being one of the, your inspirations. I would say that's probably 98% of our audience. What's, um, when some people associate it with like pale libertarianism and anti-immigration, but like also kind of anti-bigoted, what are the things from like Ron, the Ron Paul movement? Was it in the Fed? Was it the marriage equality? What are the things about the Ron Paul movement that that inspired you the most? You know, the the big thing for me was was really sort of a throwback to the 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 libertarian republicanism, you know, smaller government. Um, you know, I, I, the end of the fed stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I just like the, uh, I just like the notion that, you know, we were going to get government out of our business. Um, that, that it was a, um, you know, return to sort of a, um, smaller government republicanism. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I guess I got excited in 2008 and 2012 over just the just just smaller government again, um, but I can't say that you know I'm not uh, you know I'm not really a um, I, you know I read a lot of the you know the 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 um, Lou Rockwell stuff and yeah. things like that you know in 2008 and 2012, but I you know I can't say that I really um, and I, I didn't buy in fully to every word, you know, I wasn't a, a syncophant, if you will, but I, I, I really, um, I, I really have great respect for Ron Paul and his ability to be, um, to, to be a, um, you know, a, a, a leader of the movement and that, you know, libertarians, um, whether big L or small L, whether Republican or, 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 or libertarian, um, you know, took a lot of, uh, a lot of inspiration from that movement. And I, you know, I, I remember in 2008, um, you know, I, I have, I have a very, very vivid memory of some of the early money bombs and, you know, watching with, you know, which with thousands overnight as, you know, I think it was December, the December 16th one, you know, the, the, the first, um, tea party, um, money bomb and things like that. It is just, just an exciting time to, to be engaged, um, in the political process again. And, you know, um, when you look at young Americans for Liberty and the things that they've done in, in recent years and knocking on doors and, and, um, you know, they, they grew out of that movement. So I'm, you know, I, you know, individual elections come and go. Um, but I think a movement moves on and, um, you know, we are part of a great movement, um, no matter what party we're part of. Absolutely. You know, I, th I think, uh, I said there's two ways you can name a movement. If you call it young anything, well, you're going to grow yeah. out of it in 10 years, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, you call it yeah. modern. I think it's funny, you know, they talk about like, oh, neoconservatives. And they were using that term in like the 20s. And I'm like, oh, they didn't even know we were going to be here in 100 years being like, yeah. we still call people neocons. You know? still, yeah, yeah. Is it really new anymore? I mean, it, it's it's tough naming, you know? Yeah, Um. Yeah. So let me let me ask this. Uh, probably one of the few things that I miss about being in the Republican Party is the ability to garner uh, unity. I think libertarians are very much like, oh, are you one of the Ron Paul ones? Or like you were talking about the Lou Rockwell ones. Are you a Murray Rothbard guy? Are you a you know Mike Shipley guy? Are you a uh, Nicholas Sarwar guy? Like you almost have to like get behind like a specific caucus or something. Did you get like more of a herding cats feel when you joined the Libertarian Party as opposed <laughs> to 
the Republicans where they just, I mean, when I was Republican, people would just embrace you with the R and they just say, oh yeah, he's Republican. He's one of our guys. It's okay. Right. Yeah. No, I think that, uh, you know, that's, that's the great thing about libertarians is it really is about herding cats. Um, and, and, um, it's hard to herd cats. Um, and, um, but I, but I think that, that, that libertarians are learning um, to, um, to to be a real party, um, and and that's you know one of the things that I've encouraged folks to do. Um, if if you read um, Robert Heinlein's book, um, take take your country back or something like that. I don't know what the exact title is. I um, and um, it talks about building parties and building machines. And I think that, that libertarians need to do more and more of that. Um, we need to be ready to, um, to, to, to build our party. And, um, and, and that will, um, you know, the Republicans and Democrats have an advantage over um, libertarians because they're, they're a habit. Um, you know, we have a, we have a, um, people have developed habits, sometimes multi-generational habits yeah. of being Republicans or Democrats. And so, um, we have to find ways of, um, of, of, of making being libertarian a habit and whether that's as a, as a, as a, as a big L libertarian or as something else, you know, it, it doesn't really matter if the movement is working right. And so we have to, we have to develop that. Well, I promise you 20 to 30 minutes. I'm approaching the end, and okay. I feel like the one qu- last question that we need to ask, you said you were deciding on some things for your future. Have you decided on some things for your future? Um, you yeah, uh, sort of, yeah. You know, I, mean, I, I plan on writing a book. Um, you know, awesome. my, uh, yeah, um, about uh, uh, about sort of my experience of, 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 of you know, becoming a big L libertarian as well as, um, you know, sort of um, how we might move ahead. That way you um, don't have to do this uh, podcast a hundred thousand times. Yeah, one for well, each well, You can just you know, say, I've finally written a book. <laughs> I've, I've written a book. Here's yeah. the link. Go buy it. <laughs> yeah. um, no, no uh, um, that, that, that's a part of it. But, you know, I, mean, I, I, I enjoy doing this. I intend to continue on um, within the Libertarian Party. Um, you know, I, I it, that was kind of crazy. I figured as soon as I got done, and maybe I mentioned this here, I don't remember. I, I've mentioned several places. But I've got five, five um, state party conventions that I'm going to be going to um, in, in, in the early part of next year um, and maybe more. I, probably after these podcasts, I'll get more people contact. Oh, she's willing to come out. So, <laughs> so, I mean, I almost asked uh, you. I'm here in Utah yeah, being like, is, are, we, yeah. are we on the block? Oh, I'd, 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 I'd love to. You know, I, I, I like to travel around and, 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 and talk to libertarians around the country. And so um, I will continue to do that to the extent that anybody asks. Um, there are some other things that I, I plan on doing i signed a contract today with a um with with a an economic freedom think tank here in nebraska um so i'm going to continue working on occupational licensing reform in that in that arena and um you know make a little bit more money um that'll be a good thing but um you know i I, everybody everything that i am doing is um it's going to be related to to um, you know, to, to to growing the movement and to, to making us more free in different areas, and um, I'm I'm excited about uh, about what I'm going to do, and um, you know we'll see what happens in another two years or four years or six years. Um, you know I um, I, I uh, enjoy um, you know working with libertarians and being around libertarians of all sorts, big L and small L small L and, um, you know, I'll I'll do these when I can and, um, you know, be actively engaged with the, with the libertarian party and with the movement generally whenever I can. Awesome. Well, Laura, thank you so much for sharing your story, your journey, yeah. your your uh, your history with us. I, I really do appreciate it. I know uh, you've got a lot of commitments, like I said, and I appreciate you taking the time to make this one happen. Absolutely happy to be here. So um, thanks for having me on. Anytime. And uh, okay. we will see you around. All Absolutely. around. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks.